Jeff, just to follow up your last, my last question to you is, I know you talked about the Al Roker story. I was, you know, fortunate enough to talk to him. The importance of seeing people like yourself, especially those maybe in the public eye, but just to get that, um, you know, presence out there. What's the importance of having people share their stories, people like you, um, to make sure that other people are hearing that message of what you were talking about, getting screened earlier, um, and just taking better care of their health? Again, the, the awareness, because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. And so if you have a situation going on with inside of your body, um, the more you know about it, the better off you are. Uh, a case in point, I was uh, a few years ago when I was going to the men, my, my nurse and men's health fair, I felt a little guilty because if I have health insurance and I'm taking up a space for someone who does not have health insurance, then after speaking to the director of that, he says, no, don't ever feel that way. If they see you are more interested in your health conditions, that would probably inspire others to do the same thing. And so I, I, sort of, I sort of changed my thought process on that. And, um, and so now that I've been diagnosed with this prostate cancer, more people need to become more aware of their bodies and take an interest in, 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 in care for themselves. Probably the most important one is be, get yourself checked. Um, the quicker, the better. And, and so if there, if, if there is a presence of cancer, you can get it treated quicker, quickly and get it uh, taken care of versus waiting until later because Men of color tend not to go to the doctors a lot. And if they do so, it's always at the ninth hour. And so the sooner you can get it uh, checked and get it uh, tested or what have you, the better off you will be. And so that would be my conversation with him or any, or any, men, any man of color um, to get checked and get checked quicker. I'm really grateful to Jeff for coming on and sharing your story because it's it's not... It's not easy to do sometimes, and especially sometimes with prostate cancer, people have some, sometimes some funny ideas about prostate cancer, but I think, I think it is so valuable to share stories. I think we're good at sharing the numbers and sharing the mechanism of treatment and, and how to navigate through it, but um, that's, the, the whole reason we do that is so we can have life, and I think that, you know, when people can see Jeff now, he's gone through his treatment, you know, he's still smiling, he's still doing stuff with his dog, he's still living life. I think that's really valuable and knowing how to negotiate that, it helps people see that there is something up there ahead when, when maybe all you can see is that diagnosis initially. So I'm really grateful, Jeff, for you to doing this with us and sharing your story. And, and I think we as doctors, or my message I think to doctors would be, we need to listen to this aspect of the story because this helps us to understand, this helps us to select which treatment maybe is the best. And, and we need to really listen to what do our patients value? What do they care about most? Um, you know, one of the questions I ask is, sometimes as doctors, we get stuck on thinking about how to improve the survival of the patient, right? That we get focused on the survival, especially cancer-specific survival. That's our wheelhouse. And, and sometimes we forget, we think about the cancer and we forget about the patient who has the cancer. And so I think I would just encourage doctors to to, to listen to what the patient is saying, what they value, what they care about, where they want to go, and, um, and then we can help choose and help them choose the treatments that help them to meet those, those goals. And I really also appreciate what Jeff said about some of the disparities in, in prostate cancer because they're, they're marked in the United States. And it's interesting, we've, we're beginning to dig into the, why this is. We know that African-American men are more likely to get prostate cancer. And when they get it, they're almost twice as likely to die from it. And there's been a lot of, you know, proposed theories as to why that is, but most of the uh, recent data suggests it's largely be due to uh, non-biological related things. A lot of people have thought maybe it was all due to different genetics between African-Americans and Caucasians, but the genetics seem to play actually a fairly slim role overall. It's more, more likely due to lower insurance rates among African-Americans, lower access to care, uh, lower education uh, about these topics. And so I think these kinds of things are really helpful to help us begin to overcome these things. Because if, if people listen to Jeff, you know, and, and go out and, 
and get screened and be active participants in their health care, I think we will be able to shrink those discrepancies. And if we do things on a society level, like improve the amount of an, a number of people insured and, and improve you know, educational outreach, that I think we can start to, to narrow these discrepancies. Thank you.